it's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Now this is actually the tipping point for me in terms of my fandom for Harry Potter because after this film came out, things changed for me drastically, of which I'll talk about near the end of the review. This film has Mike Newell as the new director, as well as Roger Plant coming back, or Roger Platt returning as D.O.P. You guys remember his work? He was the one who decided to do all the Dutch angles in Chamber of Secrets, and he's back with a reckoning. Because when the Quidditch World Cup camp goes all topsy-turvy with the Death Eaters coming, he's doing Dutch angles more than frickin' Battlefield Earth was. It's a Dutch angle, Dutch angle, Dutch angle, Dutch angle, Dutch angle. This film was also kind of a strange amalgamation of what Chris Columbus had done with the first two films, as well as the updated sort of view and visual representation that Alfonso Cuaron had done in the third film. This film also marks the first time that John Williams is not doing the score. Michael Gambon really takes a step with Dumbledore in this film. He's there in the third one and admittedly I was one of those kids, again, riding on nostalgia who didn't exactly like Gambon at first, but by God does he cut down on the script by like half an hour. If Richard Harris had somehow survived for another 10 years. I honestly have no idea how they would have done the latter scenes, especially leading towards the Half-Blood Prince. I have no idea how Harris would have been able to get through those without either falling asleep, clearly having like a, a, a thing in front of him telling him what his lines are, or just not giving a shit. I think that this film is a commendable effort. It's not one of the standout ones in terms of the films, but it does set the tone for what is to come. That was what it felt like with the book. Admittedly, Prisoner of Azkaban kind of set us up for this, so it's not as much of a gut punch as it was when reading the series. This is definitely the most action-packed Harry Potter film of all of them because of the Triwizard Tournament, the challenges that he, Harry has to go through, as well as it also introduces my favorite character, at least one of my favorite characters in the Harry Potter series, Alistair Moody. However, the one issue, the big issue I've always had with Alistair Moody is what we technically got was the Barty Crouch Jr. version of Alistair Moody. Is the actual Alistair Moody like the version that we got or is he a little bit different? And that's something that kind of was never fully developed or it might have been in the Order of the Phoenix, but honestly I can't tell you because I hated that book. It took so long for me to read emo Harry just going, oh, I'm the chosen one, oh, it just, that's a bad representation of it, but that's what I felt like reading that book. Back onto this film, I feel that while Roger's cinematography is not the most welcome, I was very much enjoying the previous guy's work. It's not the worst. It works in the dream sequences. It works when Voldemort is revealed. He does try a few different things other than a Dutch angle here and there, but admittedly he does rely on it a bit too much. Speaking of too much, the hair. Who thought? that this was a good idea. Give all of the boys mops. Was it the actor's choices? Was it the production's choices? To be honest, in the entire series of all the Harry Potter movies, all of the decisions, all of the changes, all of the casting choices, every single choice that was made in this entire series, the worst one, in my opinion, was going with this hairstyle. Ron looks like a twit. Harry looks like a twit. Their hair is terrible, and I don't understand why they went with this, because everyone else looks nice in this movie, except for these two bumbling idiots. Neville even gets a little bit of introduction, and that's something else that the series also started to delve into was Hey, there's other people in this series besides the three main leads. They don't get as much screen time as one would hope for, especially with Neville and the arc that he's going to go through later on. However, I still feel that it's welcome to see other characters besides the main three, and this is also the beginning of me not liking Ron. I can't stand Ron. As I pointed out in my Philosopher's Stone review, I feel that his purpose, his overall usefulness to the series pretty much was tapped out after the first movie because after this he just becomes a jerk, he just becomes a whiner, he, he, he doesn't do anything. Hermione and Harry are the ones who are solving everything whereas Ron's in the back going, Meh. 
Who was Harry doing this? I want to be something. It's very interesting to think about it because when I finished the Harry Potter novel series, I do remember having a distinct thought that I actually never liked any of the main characters by the end of it. I was more attached to the story, I was more attached to the world than I was to the characters' plights. It's funny to think about it that Rowling couldn't write three characters to be interesting for me by the end because as we're gonna see, Ron and Hermione just keep doing the same loop. They keep doing the same thing. I remember that distinctly in the novels. I just remember these two just going through spats over and over again. And even though it was pretty obvious by the second book that they were gonna end up together, I don't understand how because they would definitely be divorced if they were a real life couple. But Goblet of Fire, it's fun. It's not a step backwards, but it's also not a step forwards. I would say it's, hmm. It's kind of just in the middle of the road. It doesn't further anything in terms of how the film establishes the world, establishes the, how Harry Potter and his friends kind of go on their adventures. It's just slightly like two, but with a breath of three. So again, not that much of an advancement, especially considering the magnitude of this. However, seeing Ray Fiennes as Voldemort is quite entertaining. As a kid, I thought he was a bit scary, but seeing him here, I'm laughing every time he's like, <sighs> but also speaking of which, this is at the point in time, if I'm correct, I might be wrong, but I believe before the fifth film came out, the seventh book came out, I lost all love for the series because in my interpretation, Voldemort got beaten by a case of Butterfingers. But that's something that we're going to talk about, obviously, as we go on. But maybe when I start the fifth review, I'll kind of go a little bit more into that. In the end, though, I'm going to give the Goblet of Fire a 4 out of 7. It's okay. Yeah, that's it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.